Hey everybody, it's Mo and welcome back to One Mo Kidney. And today I got a special story that I want to share with y'all. It's um, inspired by a tweet that I saw and um, quote tweeted earlier this week is about a story um, that resonated really deeply with me. I'm going to link the tweet in the description. So if you want to read the whole thing, the thread, you could take a look. But basically, a med student, she went out to dinner with her med school friends and she talked about how her waiter overheard parts of their conversation and shared his story as a patient, a former patient with cancer, and kind of what separated the good doctors from the not so good ones. And it really boils down to, you know, um, treating the person first and not the patient and seeing the humanity in people. And um, so that obviously resonated deeply with me uh, as a former patient. I had my fair share of great doctors and not so great ones. And as a future physician, it's definitely something I wanna keep in mind moving forward. So I'm gonna share a story right now about a, a really special doctor who I had when I was first diagnosed. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to get into it. So I have another video somewhere on my channel talking about how I found out I was an end-stage renal failure um, that has a lot more information. So I'm gonna just briefly go over where I was at this point. I was just transferred to the larger um, institution, the larger hospital, as they felt they were more adept at handling my cases. Um, they didn't know yet how severe it was. And when I got there and after a few days, the attending, um, you know, sat me down and told me, you have end stage renal failure. Um, we think you're gonna have to start dialysis. You know, all this stuff that at the time was just going over my head and I didn't really know what was going on. And so, um, you know, that's obviously very scary as you don't know what's wrong with you. You don't know when you can go home. You don't know how serious it was. I didn't even know what dialysis was, which in a way, I guess, is could have been a blessing because I didn't know how rough it would be. Um, but at that point, there was an attending and he was followed around by um, four to five, literally four to five residents and med students almost every day as he was coming in and out of my room. Um, and I learned it was because my case is, it was pretty rare because you don't see such severe renal failure in such a young guy at the time with no, absolutely no prior indications of any health problems. And so people were coming in and out and in and out, you know, blood draws every few hours. I, I really, I felt like I don't know what, what's a good analogy for it, but they were just picking and prodding me and asking me all these bunch of questions. And um, it, it was almost surreal, like, I felt like an exhibit, you know, almost. And it was rough. And it was, I tried to stay calm because it was especially hard on my parents. Um, but then I remember there was a special resident um, who noticed I was struggling and came and sat with me once after all the rounds after everyone else left he came and just sat and just talked with me um and that was the first time i had a, a physician anyone in healthcare there any nurse med student resident or physician just sit down and talk with me and not really anything to do about my situation um he asked me like you know what i was studying in school what i'd like to do outside of school um, so I told him like I, I play basketball, um, I, I love video games, simple stuff like that, what I was watching on TV at the time. And then so um, he got to talking and shared his story and uh, it turns out this guy, um, shout out to Dr. Matthew um, was his name, but this guy is, you know, he was an older guy. So I actually thought he was an attending at first, um, but he told me he went back to med school and is now in residency after he already had a career as a pharmacist at the time, like, you know, that's really inspiring, you know, to see someone not giving up on their dreams. And despite how hard med school and residency could be, especially if you're at the stage where you already have a family and people to take care of, you're going back to school because you feel in your heart, you want to help people in that sort of way. That's nothing but, you know, respect for that. And so um, it was just a real great conversation. I was talking with him. And I remember it was a special moment at the end because he told my parents, like, um, is he bored and stuff like that? What, what are you guys up to? And I was like, eh, you know, he's like, it, it would be nice to get him some video games if you guys could, like, bring him some video games, take his mind off things. And I so appreciated that because he was like, just, you know, looking out for me and my parents were like, oh, the doctor told me to get him video games. So literally two hours later, 
um, they sent my brother out to buy an Xbox and bring it to the hospital and they set it up and later that night we were playing Xbox in the hospital um, and you know a few days after that um, Dr. Matthew came in and checked on us and um, it, it was a it's um, just just an awesome story the more I look back on it and it really truly made the difference in that first time my first stages of this illness and learning about this disease how that person was just looking out for me for me and um really caring about how i was feeling and doing outside of my numbers which of course are important and was a big part of keeping me healthy i guess was making sure i didn't die because my numbers were so crazy but he looked out for me beyond that and so um his name was dr matthew actually he made just as big of an impact on my parents, especially my mom. So me and my mom, we would, after I got released and a few months later, we were, I was looking for him to find a way to thank for him. I looked on all the websites for the hospital. I looked and tried to find which residents they had in internal medicine or, and I couldn't find anything, but it's always, um, I'll never forget that person um, who truly made a huge difference in my life. And so, yeah, that's the story and kind of how the tweet resonated so deeply within myself and my own experiences and you know it's the kindness that you show people that can make all the difference and it's what people remember down the road um and you know throughout my whole journey and throughout my life's journey and struggling with and seeing struggle in a lot of people including myself and my friends people often ask like what do you say in tough situations how how can you be there for someone and i think the most important thing is um, people don't always, you know, remember exactly what you say, so don't get caught up in saying that. But if you're authentic and genuine to the best of your ability and you try and be there and help out as best as you could, people get the sense of that. And that kindness and compassion is what they remember um, years down the line. Like this story was, this 10, 15 minute conversation was from over four years ago, um, but I still remember it so vividly because it impacted me so deeply and it's something that I'll probably remember for the rest of my life or at least I hope to do, I do so yeah that's the story and thank you for watching shout out to Dr. Matthew um, until the next time peace